Hey folks, welcome to another Passion for Sound audio review. This beast in front of me here is the Monolith Liquid Platinum Amplifier, a product that a number of you requested reviews for. So a little while back, I looked on the Monoprice website, decided to pull the trigger and order one for myself because A, I was interested to hear it and B, I figured it was something that you were all interested in. So in today's review, we're gonna look at whether or not it's a good buy, how much different tubes can change the sound of it and how it stacks up against some other amplifiers that you might consider instead. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the review of the Monolith Liquid Platinum. The Liquid Platinum retails for about 800 US dollars, which equates to around about 1,060 Australian dollars. That's before any shipping costs. And I want to mention that because it added 150 US dollars to the price tag when I ordered it because of the weight and the size of the packaging it comes in. It's not a particularly heavy amplifier, but by the time you include the external power brick and the physical dimensions of the packaging, it cost a fair fortune to get it shipped to me. So do keep that in mind depending on where you are in the world and how much shipping generally costs from the US to your location, the monolith can add up to a fairly expensive amp pretty quickly. And I'm gonna keep that in mind when we get to talking about what I think the competitors are because you need to take shipping into account. The Liquid Platinum or the LP is a very simple amplifier. When I first got it, I kind of admired its simplicity, but as it sat on my desk for longer, I'm a little bit unimpressed with the design. I don't enjoy looking at it the way I enjoy looking at other equipment on my desk. It's not ugly or bad, it's just boring and dull. But let's talk about what's actually on the various panels and what the design looks like overall. <laughs> Starting on the front here, we've got a very simple front panel with a power button over here. And then we've got our outputs for single-ended and balanced connections of headphones, moving through to a volume control and an input switch. So very, very simple, nothing too fancy. There's no gain controls, there's no preamp switching or anything like that. It's just a simple range of outputs, volume, and choice over connections. Looking at the top of the amp, something we don't normally do, you'll see there's two tubes sticking out the top here. Now these tubes are an E88CC or a 6922 tube. They're not too hard to come by, so you can easily pick up alternatives for around about 50 to 60 bucks each, and that's talking Australian dollars, so 30 to 40 US dollars each. I'll talk shortly about how much difference they make to the sound and whether I think this is an amplifier that's worth doing some tube rolling with. One thing I do like about the LP's design is these vents down the side. It gives you a little bit of a sneak peek at the inside of the device. It obviously helps with cooling and I think it looks pretty good too. There's another one on the bottom that you won't really see, but that's going to allow additional cooling and airflow. Finally, if we look at the back of the device, you've got on the back here an RCA single-ended input and a pass-through, so that's gonna take the single-ended signal and just spit it straight out with no volume control or anything. It just allows for daisy chaining of amplifiers. And you've also got the XLR balanced inputs as well. Finally, you've got a power input for a 36 volt 1.4 amp power brick. So as I said, the amplifier is very basic. It's very simple. I think it's a little bit too simple in some ways, but some people are gonna love it, some people might hate it. It's one of those things with industrial design. Before I go on to talk about the sound, let's talk briefly about the power outputs because it's quite an interesting amp in terms of its power specs. I do wanna give kudos to Monoprice for sharing the full range of power details on the website because I definitely think it's gonna help as people think about which headphones they're pairing this with. I'm gonna share the numbers on the screen because it's easier than me constantly looking back and forth to my notes, but the key thing I wanna point out is that the single-ended and the balanced outputs have completely different characteristics for power delivery, namely that they produce exactly the same power output at 56 ohms, but then behave differently below and above that figure. What that says to me is the circuits are behaving quite differently in terms of how they manage voltage and or current delivery. The good news is you should have plenty of power for any headphone you choose to drive with the monolith, particularly in balanced mode. 
In single-ended, you may struggle with any very difficult to drive headphones, but the balance there should be plenty of power. In fact, something that I found with the Liquid Platinum was that it was too powerful in a lot of cases. The single-ended is very usable across the board, but I found balance was really difficult because I was operating at the lower ends of the volume control, and sadly, this volume control has quite a bit of channel imbalance. The starting point for the volume or the zero position is around 7 o'clock and there's channel imbalance all the way up to 8 or even 8.30 on the dial. So you have to start getting up towards 9 o'clock in order to get the balanced signal and at that point it's actually getting too loud for my levels of listening at least which I think tend to be around that sort of 84 dB level. That was starting to get difficult to keep outside of the channel imbalance range on certain headphones. Single-ended, there's no problems at all, but then as I'll talk about in a moment, you are trading off sound quality in order to do that. The only solution I came up with for the volume control issues was to use my TT2 as the source and actually pull back the output levels on that because it does it in a bit perfect way. So if you do have some sort of preamp capability on your DAC that's able to do it without degrading the sound quality, then you'd have no problems with this. But if you're in a position where you're feeding it with a pure, dedicated DAC with no volume control, you may actually find a problem driving lower impedance and or high sensitivity headphones. I thought it would be worth providing some details on what I'm talking about with the volume control. So I ran through a whole bunch of headphones with the Liquid Platinum and I made note of where the volume control was for comfortable listening levels, which means probably around that 84 decibel mark. With both the Focal Clear and the HD800S, I was below nine o'clock. Now keep in mind, channel imbalance stops somewhere in the eight to 8.30 range so I was just out of channel imbalance and I was hitting what I would consider comfortable listening levels. This is all using the DAC line level output from the Hugo TT2. So it's not a crazy hot DAC output that's feeding it, but there may be some other DACs on the market that do have slightly lower outputs and therefore might be a better pairing with the Liquid Platinum. But moving on, the Focal Clear and the HD800S, we've said just out of that channel imbalance range. Moving on, the Hyphen and Sundaras, that are a touch more difficult to drive. They got me to pretty much right on 9 o'clock. Again, not far out of that channel imbalance range. And the DT880s, which are a single-ended, I was still only able to get up to 10 o'clock despite the lower power output for single-ended and the higher impedance of the DT880s. So as you can see, most headphones that I've tried with this, whilst not that difficult to drive, they're sitting in that nine to 10 o'clock range and it just doesn't give enough usable range on the volume pot to make me comfortable recommending this amplifier. I did also listen with the Meza Imperians. It was the same with those. Pretty much everything in my collection struggled to get past nine o'clock, maybe 10 o'clock at a pinch. I also tried the Tin P2 IEMs, which are quite difficult to drive as an IEM, and they only just got to eight o'clock. So whilst you can technically use this for IEMs, given that the noise floor is nice and low, you'd need to be using single-ended, and even then you may struggle to get enough volume range. While we're talking about single-ended and balanced, I should mention that I tried both inputs, and both the single-ended and balanced inputs perform identically. So you don't need to worry about using this from a single-ended source and driving balanced headphones. It'll do that just as well as if you've got a balanced DAC. Unfortunately, as I've already alluded to, the single-ended output is not quite so good. As well as having less power, which is not necessarily a bad thing, the sound gets a little bit thicker and the soundstage becomes a bit more intimate. I guess for some headphones that may be preferable, but to me, I didn't feel like I was getting the best out of the amplifier when I was running it single-ended. So I would recommend this as a balanced headphone output amplifier first, with the single-ended more as a convenience option rather than an equivalent output with just lower power. It is, I believe, degrading the sound quality slightly. It's still quite listenable and enjoyable, it's just not as good as I would want it to be for that thousand odd dollar price tag. So let's now talk about that sound quality. And for all of this description, I'm talking about the stock tubes, which are electro harmonics tubes that come with the amplifier in the packaging. The sound from the Liquid Platinum, I would describe as clean, fairly articulate, and slightly dry sounding. This is not a thick, tubey amplifier. And, and again, I hate using that term because tubes can range everywhere from thick and muddy all the way through to clean and articulate. So this is an amplifier that sits at the end of being fairly articulate, a little bit dry, and more solid state sounding, I would say, than what some people may think of as a tube sound. Its tonality is actually quite similar to the Hugo TT2. So in that regard, transparency and lack of coloration is very much a strong point of the liquid platinum. 
It doesn't, however, have the transparency in the sense of the resolution, the layering, and the accessibility of all of the different sounds in the music, because things do get a bit congested and a bit muddled within the soundstage. That soundstage is okay in terms of width, but it's not particularly deep, and layering is just average. It's not as good as I personally expect for an amplifier at this price point. I think ultimately what I found, and it didn't really matter which headphones I plugged into the Liquid Platinum, I found I was never really engaged by it. And I think that's due to the lack of layering and space within the soundstage and the overall presentation didn't ever get me lost in the music. It was kind of like it was reminding me that I was listening to a 2D facsimile of the music rather than getting right into it like I was sitting there with the musicians. So it's not bad, it's a decent amplifier, but I just don't know that it's worth the 800 US dollars plus whatever shipping costs come with that. Before I made up my mind on the sound quality though, I did want to change the tubes because tubes can have a massive impact on sound quality depending on the amplifier design. So as you can see over here to my right, I did buy a couple of other sets of tubes to see what I could find. One set was a pair of JJ Electric's new production tubes in the E88CC labeling, which is basically interchangeable. So the numbers that I'm sharing here, they're all interchangeable, whether it's an E88 cc or a 6922 they're the same tube so the jj electrics come as an e88cc and they brought a really interesting kind of extra bit of drive and push to the amplifier that i did prefer to the stock tubes in some situations the sound got a bit thicker the mid-range got a bit more forceful but on things like rock and blues it was quite an enjoyable upgrade it still didn't transform the headphone amplifier into something I love and I really want to keep, but it was definitely nice to hear that you can tweak it and improve the sound potentially with the right tubes for your headphones and your setup. The other tubes over here in the red box are some National Electronics NOS tubes. So new old stock, they're an old production tube that someone's found in a warehouse somewhere and made them available. So those in this amplifier brought a real sense of articulation and clarity to the sound, which again I enjoyed, but once again it didn't transform the amp for me. So in both cases I'd say either set of tubes for me was an improvement over the stock tubes provided, but neither set of tubes had me going, okay, this is a fantastic amp now. That's not to say there isn't a set of tubes out there that will transform this into an amazing amp, I just haven't happened to land on them. The National Electronics probably won out for me out of the three options available in terms of giving a better sense of layering, space and articulation to the sound, which is what I felt was the, the Achilles heel of the Liquid Platinum, but it still didn't take it to the heights I was hoping for. And I think now is probably a good time to give you a sense of what my reference points are for why I'm saying I don't think this is as good as it could be. By the time you're spending 800 US dollars on an amp like this, there are other options on the market like the Burson Soloist over behind me here, which is only 200 US dollars more, that all of a sudden perform at a whole different level. I also compared it briefly to things like the very low priced shit Asgard 3 that I reviewed recently. And whilst the Asgard 3 wasn't quite up to the standards of the Liquid Platinum, the gulf wasn't wide enough for me to even begin to justify spending that much money on it. But coming back around to the Soloist, which is more of a, a like for like type comparison, the Soloist just hands down beat the Liquid Platinum across the board. Transparency was better, spatial information was better, there was fuller bass coming out of the Soloist, everything about it, it was just doing better than the Liquid Platinum. And that's regardless of the tubes that I was using. So that's where for me, I'm a bit disappointed. I was expecting great things out of Liquid Platinum and it just fell short for me. One other brief comparison I tried, which was probably a little bit unfair in hindsight, but I happened to have it here and it was worth trying, was the Aorus Audio Uterp behind me. Now the Uterp retails at a much higher price. I think it's about 1700 US dollars thereabouts. It's clearly in a different league and it probably should be at more than twice the price, but it just showed me how far behind the Liquid Platinum is when the Uterp here was just articulate, clear, smooth. It's got a real magical tone to it. And I look forward to sharing the review on that one because it kind of sets a bar for me as to what the Liquid Platinum should be aiming towards. Even if it doesn't get all the way there, I think it needed to get closer. My trusty bottlehead mainline, which is now hiding under my desk, that's another example where for 1200 US dollars, which is not a huge leap beyond this, it's also up there with the Uterp producing spectacular sound quality that the Liquid Platinum is still a fair way from. And what's holding it back is that congestion, that lack of space, and that lack of layering. So for me, I'm glad I've tried this out. It's probably going to end up of costing me a bit of money and probably wasting a bit of money because I don't like it as much as I hoped. 
it's an amplifier that I wouldn't say don't buy it, but I would definitely say buy it with your eyes open. Know that it's got some problems. I don't think it's the last word in the quality of the sound that it delivers. I don't think it's got a great volume and gain implementation. It's very hard to use with a whole lot of headphones. And so for me, it's an amp you buy because you're curious, you like the look of it, you want to give it a try, and you're willing to live with some of those drawbacks I've mentioned. There is absolutely the chance that with the right set of tubes, and I've only tried three sets, there's absolutely the chance that with the right set of tubes, it could come alive more. But I feel like it's being held back a bit somewhere by the design, and so therefore, it also may not be possible to fix it with tubes. I don't know, and I can't answer that question. For now, though, what I'd suggest is if you're in the market and you've got $800 US dollars to spend, have a think about whether you can stretch up to something like a bottlehead mainline and build it yourself, or a burst and soloist and go the solid state route, or of course, look at other options in and around the $800 range and make sure you're set on your decision before you pull the trigger on the Liquid Platinum. I don't think it's going to be the most rewarding amp that you can buy for that $800. US I hope this review has been helpful. I hope it's maybe saved you some money or sent you in a direction where you're going to get better value for your money. And if it has, please think about pressing the subscribe button and the like button. For now though, happy listening, and I'll look forward to seeing you here next time on Passion for Sound.